sets the tone for the message that you're about to hear this afternoon. Thank you for coming, as Sister Brian has said. We welcome all of you for this conference. You know, it's just about healing. It's amazing how much healing we need. And Brother Sister Jeffers' ministry has been everything I've discerned more in the healing and restoration. We need him. And we're delighted that you have come. We conclude this afternoon. We introduce Brother Jeffers. I think all of you know them, Brother and Sister Jeffers from Atlanta. He's a doctor in, I think, biblical studies. It uh, preaches all over our fellowship and around the world, bringing the healing message of the word. You know, the gospel is good news. That's what it means, good news. And I, I have preached this for years, Brother Jeff, the Lord wants to heal us, to restore us. That's why we call this church the healing place, healing of soul, body, and spirit. So we welcome this afternoon. Would you make him welcome? We're glad he's at this women's conference, 13th annual, Dr. Gerald Jeffers. Brother Jeffers, come. Thank you. You may be seated in his wonderful presence. Would you just slip your hands up in this spirit of worship and begin to entertain the presence of the Lord? Come on, Rabahase Kishata Rebeheke Yoso Rabahasha Rebeko Sheki Talama Mahasata Nalabarabahasakata Shata. Mm. I feel that somebody's touching God. Somebody's, hey, somebody's pulling on some virtue right now. Hey, hey, hey. Honey. Yeah, come on, while you're worshiping, while you're praising, just going to have my wife sing.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Clap your hands, O ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of Hallelujah. 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 There, there is something, there's something we need to do here. I need to see, I need to see the hands. Before I do that, let me just say this. Uh, you heard my wife give her testimony about how she could not sing. And the voice God gave to her, and you heard her read the scripture that God said it was good. God said you needed to hear her sing so you could know that it was good what he did. But does all things well. But, but the Lord would, had spoken to me and he said that many times my children do not act out towards me simple manners. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, well, when someone does something for you, it's appropriate to say thank you. Can I see the hands of you that received healing last night? Come on, lift them up, lift them up. We spend a long time asking, but we don't spend too much time thanking. I just want to ask you this question that he told me to ask you. Have you thanked me just half as much as you've asked me? I wonder if somebody will rise to their feet and tell God, I just want to tell you, thank you didn't have to do it but you i want to tell you thank you <laughs> you don't know the midnight you you don't know the difficulty you don't know the struggle you you don't know I got a ring i got a ring you don't know what's trans You don't know what's transpiring. You don't know how I felt in the midnight hour. You don't know the times I thought I was going to die, but God. You got 50 seconds. You better let it go. You better let it go. You better, you better tell him. Come on, give him your best praise. Give him your best thank you. If you want to run, run a little bit. You want to jump, jump a little bit. You want to skip, skip a little bit. But somebody tell him. You need to wave your hand, wave your hand. All you can do is open your mouth, open your mouth. Tell him. <laughs> thank you. Oh, shakata. Grab a sister by the hand. Grab a sister by the hand. Tell her, magnify the Lord with me. Tell her, praise him. I just need a praise partner right now. I need somebody to shout with me. I need somebody to dance with me. I need somebody to holler because he's been good. Oh, 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 oh. That's right, that's right. I need somebody to get out the seat with me and run with me and dance with me and because you don't know like I know what he's done for me. You can't understand my crazy praise until you understand my crazy pain.
But when you know what kind of pain I've been in, now you know why I holler. Because I used to holler and pray pain, but now I can holler and praise. And with the same intensity that I holler in pain is the same intensity that I'm hollering in praise. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Come on, shake that sister's hand one more time and just say, holler with me. Tell her, praise with me. Just tell her, holler with me. I was ready to die. I was ready to give up. Holler with me. I'm still here. You're still here. We're still here. <laughs> I don't know what some of y'all are waiting on, but all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> get your Bibles, get your Bibles. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. We will begin in verse 20, Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. We want to thank the Lord for his presence that's so rich and real here. And we have to thank God for Pastor and Sister Brian. Thank you both. Put your hands together for this man and woman of God. Thank you, sir. Thank you, woman of God. Appreciate your sacrifice, your giving, and your willingness. Pastor, thank you for endorsing such a conference. Thank you cannot happen without your endorsement and we thank God for you amen would you put your hands together for my lovely wife anointed vessel appreciate her the Lord mightily uses her we are just so grateful for the people of God that are here today amen turn to your sister and just say you my sister I tell her I'm glad you here you my sister I'm glad you're here. Amen. I know you could have been someplace else. Come on, some of y'all got it. Y'all my sister. Yeah, some of y'all got it. I'm glad you're here. Ah, glory. Hey, 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 thank you. I'm, I'm in Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. Pastor, I don't know about you. This, this is a brilliant man right here. Amen. God's blessed him. Amen. Well, Pastor, I don't know about you, but if God had asked me to name all the animals, after a while I'd be going, whatchamacallit, who's he, what's he, thingamajingy. <laughs> this is a brilliant man. Because he's in the image of God. He's, absolutely, he's a genius. But he wasn't smart enough to get his own spouse. Holla! <laughs> See, some of you women who are so intelligent. All right, all right, all right I'm leaving now. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. This is what we call the law first reference. The law first reference is the first time anything is mentioned in scripture sets the foundation for how it is used from then on. The first time we see sleep, it's not NyQuil. It's God causes. And did you notice that? For those of you who understand, he caused not just sleep, he caused what? REM, REM, rapid eye movement. He immediately put him into rapid eye movement. 
Now that's, it was some sleep because he, he went to bed single and woke up married. <laughs> Touch your sister, say, God can minister to you in your sleep. <laughs> I... <laughs> That's why you need to ask God to put you into deep sleep. You need to ask God. Amen. All right. And verse 21, I'm going to read again. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. He took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God, he made, he made a woman, he brought her unto the man, and finally 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called what? You didn't even name yourself. I don't know if you got that. But your gender name came from a man. A wound man. A man with a wound. So I'm going to call her woman because she was taken out of a man. I wanted to speak to you for a moment on this subject, woman, woman. Lift your hands one more time. Ask God to talk to you. Father, speak to us. We need a word right to our spirits, right to our hearts. Give us revelation. Give us understanding. And then help us to have revelation with application. Help us to utilize the word which you've given us. Help us to walk out in the authority of the word. We thank you for all of these, your children. And we thank you because you love them so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. In the, in the 90s, I was approached by a powerful woman of God that was the district, or the, if you will, the bishop's wife in England. And she came to me and said, I want you to be the women's conference speaker. And at the time, I was single. I looked at her and went, huh? <laughs> Say, what? <laughs> uh, um, and I heard the Lord immediately speak to me. He said, accept it. I said, oh, okay. So I said, okay. Uh, for those of you who know Sister Claudette Walker, powerful woman of God. She, I was the main speaker, and she was going to be the other speaker. I said, what is wrong with this picture? So I went to the Lord, and I said, I'm not trying to act like I know nothing about women. I said, even your word teaches me I don't know nothing about women. Because men were asleep when women were made. I ain't trying to play. I had a doctorate degree. I didn't mean I understood women. He said, I want to start talking to you about women. I said, check, please. <laughs> I said, why? Why me? He said, I can't get a lot of women to hear what I'm telling them about themselves. They're too busy listening to their doctor, to their mother, to their grandmother, and to others until they've actually never came and talked to me about their gender. He said, you'll listen. And so when I do women's conferences, I often tell women, don't judge me by my gender, judge me by my revelation. You see, it was a man that gave woman her identity. Because you are the same gender, in other words, a man speaking to a man or a woman speaking to a woman does not make you qualified to speak. What makes you qualified is knowing the manufacturer. Say amen. And so I want to get into this a little bit with you on, on what God taught, about, taught me some things on women. And again, I'm not even trying to act like I understand everything about women. Because you see, God made you a mystery. Listen very closely. When God made you, you were unique to all the rest of his creation. 
everything prior to you, including man, was made from soil, which may, means it was made from non-living material. Woman is the only thing that God created that was made from living material. You were so deep until God had to put the man asleep to keep him out of it. And then God went into something that was breathing with a heartbeat and made the man the substance for the woman. Now, the Lord came to me and he said, has it ever, have you ever wondered why the devil particularly targets women? Molestations, rape, abuse, domestic abuse. I said, yeah, I've kind of wondered, but, you know, it was above my pay grade. <sighs> I, <laughs> you know, I didn't know. And all of a sudden, the Lord showed me in a vision. He took me over a timeline, and I saw over centuries of time, women being raped and molested and abused. And he said, this is strategic. He said, I need you to understand some things about women because the church is a woman. The word ecclesia in the Greek means church and it is feminine. The church is a woman. He said, the reason why I'm teaching you about a woman, because you have to learn to be my wife. Now watch this. If you go back again to Genesis chapter 2, I want you to see this at verse 23. Well, I guess I better back up to 22. Genesis 2, 22. God places Adam into a deep sleep, and he, he, he goes to sleep. Okay. <clears throat> In fact, uh, let, let, me, let me back up to 21, because I'm, I'm quoting that really first. Thank you. Now, the typology here is that Jesus is the last Adam, and the last Adam was put into the sleep of death, and then he's pierced in his side. Women, you understand, blood and water symbolizes birth. Out of his side comes his bride. Out of his side comes his Eve, his woman. But it came from the sleep of death. He was already dead when they pierced him. Okay, now watch this. Why did God choose the rib to make you? Your God's very, very detailed. And he just don't do stuff just to do stuff. Now, I know we get poetic with it. He didn't choose him from the head to make him above the man, didn't choose him from the feet to be below the man, didn't choose him from the side, chose him from the side because he wanted to be beside the man. That's, that's nice, that's sweet, that's true. Now can we get down to God? <clears throat> I don't know about you, but this is me, okay? This is me. If I was God, I would have made the woman from the heart of the man. God said, no. I'm going to make the woman from the rib. Watch this. The rib's function is to protect the heart. Now, the heart is meant to be the man. The man is meant to be the heartbeat of the relationship. That's why some of you are struggling, because you're the heartbeat of your family. But the man is actually meant to be the heartbeat of the family. And the woman is meant to be the rib. And what's meant to happen in the mind of God is that the heart is exposed to the rib, and the rib is exposed to the heart. So the heart and the rib see each other in a way that nobody else can see them. 
So you're meant to know the heartbeat of God. And you're meant to be the rib to that heartbeat and protect it. If I right now tell you, put your hand on your heart. Everyone put your hand on your heart. What are you touching? You're touching your ribs. But I told you to put your hand on your heart. Because even in your mind, your rib and your heart are one. So even though they are different substance, one's a bone, one's an organ, yet you see them as one. Why is the woman taken from the rib? Because she's part of the structure. My, my wife is a phenomenal administrator. She makes me laugh because, oh my goodness, she is going to get it detailed and right. She goes to make up the bed in the morning. I'm like, just throw the covers back up there, you know. Man, let's. She, no, no, it's gonna be creased. And, I mean, it's like watching a ballerina. <laughs> it's just, just, oh, she's gonna do it just right. Even in the hotel room, just. <laughs> You know, I said, God, what, you know, God had to start teaching me things. I don't know. What is this? He said, watch, go back to creation. Everything starts at creation. He said, now, when man was created, something was missing, being the woman. He said, that's why you're fine with things missing. <laughs> Move into a home. You're just glad to have the home. But when she came, nothing was missing. Everything was already in order. So she always seeks for everything to be in order. So you move into a house. My wife and I went through this. I almost had to laugh. We went into, oh, it's beautiful. First thing she's talking, we need some curtains. <laughs> order. I'm like, I'm just glad we're in a house. <laughs> I ain't staying up in here, no curtains. See, when God made the woman, and this is why Satan went after woman. All right, did you, did you notice something? When God, uh, here, let's look at it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. This is the first, what we call messianic promise. The promise of the Messiah within scripture. Remember the first, it's the rule of first reference. The first sets the precedent for how everything is used from then on. So, I will put enmity between thee. Who's thee? Thee is Satan. I will put enmity between Satan and the woman. Did you catch that? Did you notice something? God never said I'm going to put enmity between God or between man and Satan. God said, no, the direct warfare is going to be between Satan and women. See, we read these things and we're like, and unless God shows you, you read these things and you're like, duh. Like you don't, almost don't even see it. God had to open up my eyes to this stuff. You know, sometimes you want to touch it and see if it's fresh ink. Like, sometimes God shows me things like, did I have, own a Bible before this? Where was this? And God said, I'm going to put enmity between thee and the woman. And watch this, between thy seed and now, this speaks not only about a messianic promise, but it speaks about crucifixion and resurrection. Because now, what she, he says, first of all, did you catch this? A woman doesn't have the seed. The man has the seed. So he was already talking about a virgin birth, birth because he calls it her seed. Not her egg, her seed. Catch this now. He goes in and he says that her seed, singular, not plural, one seed we're talking about. Because this is only going to happen once. Her seed is going to crush or to the head. While the devil's is going to bruise the heel. So what was crucifixion to Jesus? It was a bruising of his heel. So what do you mean? When you bruise your heel, you have to lay down a while. 
because you can't walk. But after a while, it heals, and you get up and you walk again. That's why Jesus laid down for three days. Got back up and walked again. But he said, her seed is going to crush his head, which means seats of authority. The woman, God, see, here's the thing. It is because of this promise, Satan started targeting women. Because he realized the doorway of the Messiah was coming through you. Watch this, watch this. Why did he simply tempt the woman to eat of the seed or to eat of the tree? Because the tree had seed. He understood the power of the woman that if I can get my seed into her, then she will give birth to a spawn of hell. She has power to give birth either to a Messiah or to a demon. That's why the Messiah came through a woman, but so won't the Antichrist come through a woman. Because what happens is when she ate, both trees went inside of her. She is the doorways of life. Not even God would go around you to come into this world. He established you as the gatekeeper to bring life into the earth. But Satan, understanding this, said, I must start possessing women. I must rape them, hurt them, damage them. Why? So that they will give birth to what I want. Hold on. I don't got time to go through all of this. I really don't, but I can give you all a sample. So within women, there's the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Both trees are in you. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, evil is in essence what activates your period. Because why? It was death. In the day that you did this fruit, you shall surely die. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So the loss of blood is a symbol of death. It is also a cleansing of your body. But when you get ready to give life, as in to become pregnant, if your body's acting correctly, your period stops. Because you can't eat from both trees. So when the tree of life starts being activated in you, the tree of death must stop. God said, let, let's go to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, so you see what I'm talking about. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. God said, the problem that I'm having with a lot of my women is you are giving birth to spawns of hell. Paul talked to women, talked about silly women, laden down. In other words, what he was trying to say is, you're going from house to house gossiping. You find it easier to gossip on the phone than you do pray on the phone. Someone says, pray on the phone, you're like, you're weird, you're weird. <laughs> but did you see that sister yesterday? I don't know what she's wearing. <laughs> girlfriend don't either own a mirror or she don't have a girlfriend because one of them would have told her, those shoes don't go with that. <laughs> you feel me? I mean, who, where was where, she? <laughs> Touch your sister, say, what are you giving birth to? All women, whether you become a physical mother or not, you give birth.
Listen to what he said. Every wise woman buildeth her own house, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. You have the power to build the house or you have the power to tear down. Now that's why even traditionally storms were named after women. Now I know that sounds derogatory at first, but it's trying to tell the fury that the woman possesses. The problem is where is it directed? Is it directed towards the devil or is it directed towards the things of God? So the devil said, if I can hurt you, if I can molest you, if I can rape you, if I can make you fatherless, make you have issues with a father, then in my wounding of you, you will start to assimilate who I say you are. And then you will give birth to what I want you to give birth to. So watch God. God chooses a young virgin girl. Theologians say that she was approximately 14 years of age. A teenager raised the Messiah. Her name, Mary. That's the Greek name. Hebrew name, Marah. That puzzled me because Marah means bitter. If you remember in Exodus, the waters of Marah, they couldn't drink those waters. They were bitter. And so Moses said to God, what are we supposed to do? We got three million people here and animals and they thirsty. Come on, God. <laughs> talk to me, talk to me. God said, cut a tree and throw it in. Now they're in the desert. What is a tree growing in the desert? You, you're not getting this. This means that while they were in captivity, God was growing their tree. He prepares blessings for you before you ever need them. So that means he had to plant that tree, protect that tree and provide for that tree till it came of age till its people came to need that tree now cut that tree down throw it in the water why because the tree represents the cross the cross will make your bitter waters sweet jesus was hung on a cross on the tree why would the messiah come through a woman that means bitter that didn't make sense to me until God started putting all this together. He said, I'm teaching women that even though you have been hurt, molested, abused, and these things can make you very bitter, it is your choice still who you become bitter at. Now, you didn't have any choosing over being molested or, or lied on or hurt or raped or not having a father or not having a proper relationship with a mother. But after all that pain is placed inside of you, you still have the authority to choose where that pain gets channeled towards. So either you can be bitter towards Satan or you can be bitter towards God. And so he said, I'm teaching you that Mary, Marah, bitter, she became bitter towards the devil and gave birth to a Messiah. That you can actually look at the devil and say, you hurt me, you wounded me, you led someone to molest me and to rape me. You got in the head of my father, you got in the head of my mother so that she didn't treat me right. And now all this pain is inside of me. But when Zion travails, that pain is going to turn to travail. Now I'm going to travail in prayer and I'm going to give birth to the things of God. Shout yes. So yes, I was hurt. Yes, yes, all these things happened to me. But I decided not to give birth to a spawn of hell. I decided not to give birth to gossip. I decided hurting people hurt people. I decided not to be bitter and snappy and mean to folk. I'm not going to turn around and hurt others. I'm not going to give birth to pain. Touch your sister. Say, what you been giving birth to? 
What you've been giving birth to? You've been giving birth to a Messiah, which is godly answers. Or have you been giving birth to a spawn of hell, which are satanic plans? You're going to give birth. What are you giving birth to? That's why the devil's been after you, because you are officially the doorways of life. Do you understand that's why the church has to be a woman? Because the church is the official doorways of life to being born again. Jesus is the father. The seed, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 30, 23, verse 23, the seed that impregnates the church is the word. You've been born again. Not of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed, which is the word. It's the word of God. Now, what God wants to do is raise up some women in this house that understands that the devil is hunting for you because he wants your womb. Both naturally and spiritually, it has to come through a woman. Anything that comes from the supernatural into the natural must come from a womb. That's why he's trying to impregnate you with hatred. He wants you to hate men. He wants you to say, see, men are to blame for everything. Men, a pause. See, I told you it was men. <laughs> Menstrual cycle. Told you it was men. Some of y'all turn on kinds of pink and shades and stuff. Y'all act like you ain't a woman. He wants you to hate so that you will give birth. And start training your girls to rebel. So you start training them in a secular manner rather than a godly manner. Baby, always keep a bowl of grits. Because if he act up. <clears throat> what you giving birth to? Mm -hmm. you're giving birth to someone who goes after the flesh rather giving birth to someone who goes after the spirit lift your hands a moment and let the things of God begin to impregnate you somebody needs to make a commitment right now I'm only going to give birth to the things of God I will not be a pawn in the hand of the devil. I will not give birth to satanic plans. I will not give birth to a spawn from hell. That's why the devil's wanted you angry that you haven't had your father. That's why the devil wants you angry because you had an abusive husband. Because God comes in the male image. That's why the devil keeps using men to abuse you. So that you'll associate it with God. And with God's leadership. So now you come into church and you have to trust a pastor who's a man. And you've got to deal with men. And now you've got all of this kind of inhibitions. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Remember, the woman contains in her the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. She has both life and death. She has both doors in her. It is up to her to keep the door of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil shut and only keep open the door of the tree of life. Now watch this. Death and life, where does it dwell? And the power of the... T so women, what the devil seeks to do is to control your speech. And it, he first seeks to control it in talking in reference to you. 
oh, I'm such a fat cow. And then he tries to teach you to make jokes about it. Huh? More me to love. <laughs> So he wants you to talk against yourself because by doing that, what you just did was open the door to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. First John three and 12, first John three and 12. You got to see this first John chapter three, verse 12. Not as, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. Who was Cain of? Now, this isn't the serpent seed doctrine. Some people teach that Eve had sexual relationships with the devil. The devil is a liar. And produced Cain. What happened is when she took that tree, it had a seed in her. And that seed went down to her firstborn, Cain. The seed was death. So Cain became a murderer. You see, women, God's after your lineage. And what God and the devil's also after your lineage. So what God wants to teach you to do is learn how to speak about yourself correctly. So that you open up the tree of life so that you can affect your children with life. Because you're going to love your neighbor the way you love you. And the reason why some of you called your children stupid and why, why are you so dumb is because that's the way you talk to yourself. And now you pass that seed on to your children. But you remember what my wife read? Now, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. When God got done making the woman, she was the crowning achievement of his creation because it's all about the bride. God went from saying it was good, and for the first time, God looked back at everything when she was made and said, it's very good. <laughs> All right, all right. Let, let, let me finish up with this. Go to Genesis chapter 2. Go back to chapter 2. You've got to see this. And, and now go to 23. Genesis 2, 23. I, I didn't get to finish a part of this, but let me go back. Adam now said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. I'm going to call her woman because she came from a man. Now, how did he even know that? He was asleep. Somebody said, you woke up with a pain in his side. No. <laughs> I mean, how is he supposed to know this? What it means is God gave him revelation. See, a lot of you women expect your man to understand you, but unless God wakes him up, you're going to have to ask God to awaken your husband and give you revelation, give him revelation to two things in particular. Your identity, woman, and your origin. You came from a man. It's where you're coming from. So origin or past and identity, present who you are, so that he knows how to presently deal with you. Now watch this. Here's the question. Who is the woman's father? Remember, Father speaks of origin, the origin of your flesh. Adam was her father because the origin of her flesh came from Adam. He took the rib out of, of Adam's side and made the woman. So Adam.
Adam is the DNA and the source of the woman. Watch this. We illustrate this even in our ceremonies of marriage. When the father comes, walks the bride down the aisle, the first one to speak in the ceremony outside of the minister is the father. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? The father says, I do, or I, am, I and her mother do. Because at that point, the father just charged the husband with the care of his daughter. So what I've been doing for her, you now do. I put a roof over her head. Now you're going to put a roof over her head. I comforted her when she was crying. Now you comfort her when she's crying. I put food on the table so she could eat. Now you provide and you put food on the table so that she can eat. So before the man becomes her husband, he first receives the charge of the father. Because before Jesus became your husband, he first was your father. Then he becomes your husband because he's the last Adam. And so what God is trying to tell you is I'll take care of you anywhere you go, woman. I'll take care of you. My hand is over you. My protection's all around you. If you need a father, I am your father. If you need a husband, I am your husband. I know how to walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. I am what you have need of. He told Abraham this I or he told Moses this I am that I am am so what are you trying to say he said this is my name forever and to all generations the name i am is still here that's why in the book of saint john john puts the name of i am with jesus saint john chapter 6 verse 35 jesus says i am am the bread of life in saint john chapter 8 verse 12 jesus says i am the light of the world in saint john 8 24 jesus says i am he in saint john 8 58 before abraham was i i am saint john chapter 10 verse 9 i am the door saint john chapter 10 verse 11 i am the good shepherd saint john 10 36 i am the son of god saint john 11 25 i am the resurrection and the life saint john 14 and 6 i am the way the truth and the life saint john chapter 15 verse 1 i am the true vine i am i am that i am understand what it means it means when he told him i am that i am this is what it translates i will be what i will be what does that mean? Well, you don't know who I am till you need me to be it. Once you need me to be it, then I am. So you don't know I'm a friend till you're friendless. That's why I haven't been letting you have a friend because now I am. I'm your friend that sticks closer you didn't know I was a doctor until you're sick. Now that you're sick, now you need a doctor. Now I am. Throw your hands up. Open up your mouth to God right now. Thank you, honey.
I need you, I need you to put your arm around your sister. Come on, hold her close. Come on, get near your sister, hold her close. Tell her, we're going to be each other's midwife. Come on, tell her, we're going to be each other's midwife. Tell her it's time to give birth to the things of God. You've been giving birth to fear. You've been giving birth to worry. You've been giving birth to anxiety. It's time to give birth to the things of God. Shakatasha, Rabangatasha, open up your mouth. Travail, Bekotasha. It's time to give birth to the Messiah. To the answers of God. Come on, shut that door. Shut the door to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Shut the door to death. Open the door to life. Give birth to life. Give birth to faith. Give birth to peace. Give birth to love. Give birth to strength. Give birth to wisdom. Give birth to guidance. Shakata. Hiko to shata. Come on, give birth to godly dreams and visions. Come on, hold that sister real close. Come on, it's time to pray. If you're done praying with one sister, go find another sister. Come on, get up out your seat if you have to. Come on, Jesus came from heaven to earth to reach you. You can cross over an aisle to reach your sister. Get out your seat, go to another sister. Hug her real close. We are gonna give birth to the things of God. We're going to give birth to the things of God. Come on. Come on, we're going to give birth to your children being saved. We're going to give birth to your grandchildren being saved. We're going to give birth to your unsaved husband. We're going to give birth to you having a husband in God. Come on, we're going to give birth to your identity, godly identity. Shut 
that door. Shut that door to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Shut that door. Come on, we're going to give birth to you speaking right. You speaking life. Stop speaking death. Stop speaking weakness. Stop speaking sickness. Stop saying you're ugly. Stop saying you're fat. Stop saying you're stupid. Stop saying you're thick and you just can't seem to get it. Come on, women. Travail. Speak. I am the head. Speak. I am intelligent. Speak. I am beautiful. Speak. Come on, get up and find another sister. Don't you sit there with your mouth closed. If you're sleepy, get up, my friend. Walk, go get hold of somebody. Come on, I know we ate and we're tired. Come on, get up. Find somebody. Walk over. Put your arm around that sister. Pray with them. Be their midwife. It's time to give birth to the things of God. Come on, doorways of life. come on it's time for you to give birth to a prayer life it's time for you to give birth to hearing the voice of the Lord and knowing the voice of the Lord it's time for you to give birth to an intimate relationship with God Thank <laughs> you. 
Come on, go find one other person. Come on, get out your seat. Come on, those of you in the back, come on. Spread out, spread out, come on. God's trying to help some women in here to give birth. Give birth to ministries. It means the monitors are too loud. The monitors are too loud. Come on, give birth, give birth. Come on, give birth to that beauty that's inside of you. Give birth. Give birth to who God made you. Come on. Oh, shut up. Help her, Tolomon, shut up. 